So the home you've had for sale is finally under contract. Somebody came, maybe you, maybe they made you a cash offer. A uh, few days to close, 30 days to close, 60 days to close. That thing's as good as sold. Or is it? Let's find out. Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while since I put out a video, you know, real estate and stuff kind of gets in the way of making videos sometimes, but there's been a common theme that's coming up lately with um, some people I'm running into, and it's sellers that think they've got their home sold, that they're under contract, they're good to go, but they're not really. So there's this thing out there called wholesaling, and a lot of people are doing it now. And it's okay, it's legal, it's good to go, but when they're lying to sellers about who they are or how they operate, it's really hurting the sellers. The lady I ran into the other day had her home for sale and was already under contract for another home because she thought hers was sold. And I asked her, I said, um, cool, who'd you sell it to? She said, oh, I filled out one of these online forms, cash for houses, we buy ugly houses, yada, yada, you know, insert name here. And I said, oh, okay, so they probably gave you a lowball offer. But yeah, but they're gonna close soon. Okay. I said, all right, are you sure they're gonna close? She said, what do you mean? I said, well, a lot of times these people Either they don't close or they're not the actual end buyers. She said, well, I hope they're gonna close. I have another house to buy. I said, well, did you get proof of funds or do you, do you know that they have this cash that they kept talking about? She said, well, no. She wasn't represented by an agent, didn't have an agent that was helping her. So she didn't know to ask any of these things. Well, later when I met up with her, again, she said that she had canceled the contract with them because she called them and started asking the questions to them that I had asked her. And they started kind of giving her the runaround, basically because they didn't have the cash and had no intention of buying the house. They were just looking for someone that would buy the contract from them. See, the way these people operate is uh, they get your house under contract for X number. Let's use an example of 100,000. So here you are, you're semi-happy. You got 100,000 out of the house. You wanted more, but you'll settle for 100. Well, then these people go out and find investors or cash buyers, investors, um, or even your normal everyday folks that are willing to pay just a hair more or sometimes a lot more. Um, some of these people make $2,000 on a deal, and sometimes they make 10, 20, 30, even $100,000 own a deal like this. What they do is they get your home under contract, then they go and get another contract with someone else that they can, it's called an assignment contract. So they assign your contract between you and them to the other end buyer and they collect the difference. So instead of paying the 6% you would have paid on a $100,000 house, which is around $6,000, you might have end up actually losing the potential for 20, 30, even 40 grand more in your pocket uh, versus the you know, six or seven grand it would have cost you to use an actual agent to get it priced appropriately. A lot of times these people will contact you through either directly on the phone or through a letter in the mail and you'll call them. They'll ask you to put a lockbox on the house so they can have their contractors come in and give an estimate of the repair. Typically it's houses in distress that might need some repairs. Uh, but the, what they're really doing is for these lock boxes, they want end buyers to be able to come in and look at the house, to evaluate the house. A lot of times these people can back out even the, the day of closing and the only thing they've lost is the earnest money or deposit or whatever it is that they have in their contracts because typically they have their own personal contracts that they use. And look for the key words that say their name and it might say after that or in the contract somewhere else and or assigns is the typical verbiage they use. I just wanted to get this out real quick because it seems to be a constant thing that's going on right now uh, and actually end up putting sellers in a hard place. I hope this helps and if I can ever be any of assistance to you, I'd love to help you out one day. Thanks and have a great day. One, two, three, let's switch this up.